So quick demo of, of OpenBootTS. Um, this is my uh, virtual machine here. Let me just uh, show you this. So you can see, well, maybe you can't see. Um, one thing that's notably missing from my VM configuration here is a hard drive. Um, so this virtual machine is booted from uh, the CD. And then, uh, OK. OK, so my screen is too low resolution here. But um, I've got, uh, this is asterisk. Um, so uh, you'll see if, if people are making calls, uh, authenticating to the network, you'll see all the asterisk traffic scrolling past here. Um, and then I've got the, the SMS queue manager, so all of the messages that are coming back and forth as people are registering, they're all going through here. And then the, the fun one is, is OpenBTS itself. And there's a whole bunch of people connected to the BTS at the moment. So these are the IMSIs of, of everyone that's connected to, to my cell right now. Um, quite a few of them, so thank you for playing along. Um, just to, uh, to show you as well the, the, the Wireshark, um, if you go to statistics for voice over IP calls, um, oh, there's one call, you can pull up the player, decode it, and there's actually no audio on this. Uh, it would show you the, the, the waveform if there was actually any audio. I suspect that that was just someone, uh, someone's phone ringing. Um, but you can see, if, if there had been calls made, you'd get the, the two audio streams for each side of the conversation. Um, and it's, it's just standard SIP. It's standard voice over IP. So you can put any SIP proxies that you want in there. You can modify it. And, and obviously, it's, it's my asterisk server. So if I wanted to route all of your calls to 911, then I can just tweak my asterisk config like that um, relatively easily. So it, it does work. Um, no one's making calls, and I, I can't say I blame you for that. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, you can, um, yeah, so here you can see all of my asterisk traffic scrolling by. Um, this is, asterisk works as both the, uh, the hardware location registry and the voice over IP connectivity uh, in OpenBTS. So it'll authorize people onto the network as well as actually connecting their calls on the back end. So I'll leave that chaining away and you can, you can feel free to, to, to play with it. So the future for OpenBTS, at the moment it's, it's fairly bare bones. Um, it's, it's just... Um, uh, uh, open BTS. What I'd like to do uh, once I can get my hands on some hardware is uh, have it uh, support OpenBSC as well, which is the other open source GSM stack. Um, instead of using the USRP though, um, it uses an actual uh, micro BTS. So two very different packages. Um, and what I'd like to eventually get, get OpenBTS uh, into is uh, effectively a, a backtrack for, for GSM. Um, there's a, a, lot of, a lot of different tools out there, um, a, lot of, um, uh, a lot of software with a lot of different capabilities in GSM, and, and what I'm aiming for OpenBTS to end up as is a single repository for a, a live CD with a complete toolkit for, for GSM. So if you've got any suggestions for, for features to add to it, maybe packages uh, that you want me to add to the distribution or you know, bits of software that you want me to add, um, it's, it's all good. Oh, there is. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, wrong button. Yeah, <laughs> interesting that you say the connection's kind of bad. I'm not actually connected to the Schmookon Wi Fi here. Um, <laughs> you'll, you'll like this. Um, I've, I've actually had significant problems in the past um, connecting SIP calls uh, from behind uh, NAT. And it's, it's pretty common for networks to just not support SIP. Um, the, the only reliable way I've ever found of getting a connection that will allow me to, to, to do voice over IP is to tether to my G1. So, <laughs> 
So if you're making calls on, on this BTS, it's coming from your cell phone to my BTS over GSM, it's going over USB, going through all of the, the, the NAT in VMware, going over Wi-Fi to my cell phone, which then takes it through 3G out to, to T-Mobile and out to my SIP provider on the internet. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, so yeah, in, in, the, in the style of Dan Kaminsky, I guess you could say I'm tunneling GSM over GSM. Um, <laughs> Oh, so you can see there's, there's calls popping up. Um, I'm going to try and decode one of these. Um, I'm not used to working at such low resolution. No, it's, it's not going to play the game. We'll come back to that. So yeah, that's, that's OpenBoot TS. It's, it's essentially a, a GSM base station in a box. Uh, you just give it hardware, give it configuration, and, and you, you can take it from there. So assuming that you've, you've, you've booted up your, your base station and uh, you don't want to run an IMSI catcher, because obviously IMSI catchers are illegal. Um, we don't want to be doing anything illegal. Um, so you want to run a test network. Well, the first thing that you want to do is set your MNC and your MCC to 001001. Um, these are GSM test values, so it's a test country with a test network, and phones should not connect to it by default. Um, they, the, the other thing that you'll want to do is reduce your output power. Um, you'll see I've got no antennas on here. So um, if, if phones find base stations by camping to the, the strongest signal, if you make your signal deliberately weak, phones shouldn't camp to you. It's fairly logical. Um, the, the third thing that I'm doing here as well um, is using a, a GSM 900 frequency. So this is a European GSM frequency that over here overlaps the ISM band. So I'm not using a GSM band here, which is why uh, a, a standard uh, single band or dual band US cell phone will not be able to see the BTS. You need a quad band phone because I'm operating in GSM 900, which is the ISM band over here. So the problem with this is that despite all of these protections, um, we've seen iPhones that still kind of beat their heads against us, begging us to hack them. Um, we, we took all of these precautions, we figured out all of these, uh, these steps, uh, and, a, and a few more as well, um, to try and deter this iPhone from connecting to us during testing. And, and we could not shake it. We, we dropped our output power, we removed our antennas, we changed our, 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 our MNC and MCC, um, everything that we could possibly do to prevent people from connecting to us accidentally, and this iPhone would not leave us alone. Um, <laughs> We, we, we don't know what the specific details of that problem were, but um, I've actually been told that, that uh, since then, um, I have found out that uh, apparently uh, during the, the manufacturing process for the iPhone, uh, one of the final stages of the, the process is they, they put it onto a, a BTS with an, IMS, an MNC and MCC of 001001 in order to test the bit error rate of the radio. <laughs> The problem with that is that if they then don't clear the baseband correctly, um, that M test MNC MCC will end up as a stored preferred network by the baseband. So what we suspect is that something went wrong in the manufacturing process of that iPhone, and that test MNC MCC ended up as a preferred network, um, which is kind of scary if you think about it, um, given that this is supposed to be never seen in practice, and, and the, this particular iPhone um, just like I said, it, it, it would not leave us alone. A um, couple of bugs in OpenBTS that we've, that we've uh, seen that are kind of fun. Um, one of the things that you get to configure in OpenBTS is your network short name. So anyone who's, who's connected to the network will see it comes up as test sim. Um, you can set that to be anything you like. Um, there was a, a student in China who, who set up a, a very similar setup to this. Um, but instead of using a, a test MNC and MCC, um, he used the, the MNC MCC of China Telecom. And of course, all of the China Telecom handsets in the area connected to his BTS and started showing OpenBTS as their network name. Um, his classmates got a little upset at this, um, so he, he took down the BTS. Um, all the handsets camped back to China Telecom and still said OpenBTS as the network name. 
Um, hard reboots later, um, the, the BTS was long gone, the phones had been hard rebooted, had the batteries and SIM cards pulled, they still showed OpenBTS as the preferred network name. Um, as far as I know, he's, he's never found a way to, to, to fix that. Um, open and closed registration. So I, I mentioned um, that the, the, the text message that you send um, goes through to